But let's look at something that could make us happy. Well, they tell me that to a woman, there's one of these things that could really make her happy. And I think that makes all of us happy. And I know right now that there's people concerned about war in America, stuff like that, that, that they feel like they're losing their security. Security is an important issue. Once you get settled in, I know an uh, important thing for my wife and I is find out we like each other. Yes, <laughs> we love each other, but like each other too. And so we've been secure in our marriage now for over 63 years. That is a wonderful security. I'd hate to wake up every day and wonder how am I going to manage to get along with her today? Or what do I have to do to make her happy? You find out in that kind of security, just be you. That's what really counts. Just be you. And there is security in that. And then there's another thing all of us want. Some want it more than others. They'll struggle for it, but others don't. Can you read that? How many like to go to bed at night with peace in your heart? No, no conflicts going on, nothing like that. Nobody trying to take your property out from under you. Nothing like that. We love peace, don't we? We love peace. It's an important part of life that we want that kind of peace. The problem is we got problems. <laughs> problem is we got problems, okay? And the problem is we want all of that kind of stuff, but we find out the bottom line is real security and real peace can only come with God. God alone loves us enough that he wants us to have peace. Can God give us peace? He's the only one who can. Can God give us security? Our security is from God. And so it's just a wonderful thing. And, and listen, when you get that kind of peace and that kind of love and all that, let me tell you what, the Bible said that God loves us. And this whole thing is motivated by this. What is that? It's love. Where does love come from? You know what the Bible says? God is love. So that love comes from God. And so this kind of thing, we all want that, don't we? We want that security. We found out that money don't make us happy. Things don't make us happy. Thrills won't make us happy. Temporarily, yes, we enjoy it. God gave us those things to enjoy, certainly. but. To destroy ourselves with alcohol and drugs and all the things that we read about, Jesus said, if you love the world, you can't be God's child. And those are the worldly things that'll destroy your body. You end up with death and the lake of fire. But let me tell you what, God has something. He wants us to have more than just happiness. I got to see what I got wrote here. Well, let's try it. I've made enough mistakes, another one won't hurt today, right? Rejoicing. We don't even hear that term today, do we? But you know what? Rejoicing is a wonderful thing. That's because you're extraordinarily happy, right? And listen, it isn't temporary. When you come and have this love of God in your hearts, how much does God love us? He loves us more than we could ever imagine. But it's costly. And God paid the price for you and I that we could have an eternity of happiness and joy and peace in God, that security that comes only through the perfect gift that God provided for us. And that perfect gift is the Lord Jesus Christ and his great love for you and I. I think what a blessing that is to know that we have a God that loves us. I, I know of, I've heard of other gods, in people's minds at least, that really, those gods are cruel and mean. But this God of ours, that's not who he is. He's a God of love. And oh yeah, you could say, well, if he'd send people to hell, he must not be very, very loving. No, he gives us a choice. You can either accept the offer he gives us to have that everlasting life, or we could refuse it and say, no, I'm just gonna go ahead and please myself. 
So you're the one that makes that decision. Are you going to live to please yourself? Or are you going to live to please God? God is the one that gives us that everlasting life, and it does last forever because the Bible said Jesus made a promise that he's coming back and to receive us to himself, that where he is, we can be with him. Where will that be? How about heaven? Is that good news? God has a place for us already prepared, looking for us to arrive there, a place called heaven. What a hope we have in that wonderful place called heaven. And so, you know, I always end up with this story about Jesus, God's son, that gave his life on Calvary. And I don't ever spend enough time to tell what all happened to Jesus. But we know this, he shed his blood on that cross. And as many miracles as he had done, miracles, wonderful things he had done for so many people, yet there was a crowd there that day when he was crucified on that cross. The crowd there was laughing and making fun of him, saying, if you're really the son of God, let's see you come down off that cross. Even you know, they crucified two other guys there with him that day, one on each side of Jesus. And these guys were bad men. They had done their share of bad stuff. And so they're hanging on that cross and they're being punished for what they did. Jesus is not being punished for what they did, what he did, but for who he was. And these guys, two of them, one on each side, they up there and the crowd saying, if you're really God's son, let's see you come down off that cross and take us with you. This is what these guys added. Do that and then take us with you. Did they really believe? You'd have to say no. But you know what happened? One of these men, one of these guys on the cross called out to Jesus. He had a change of mind. He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Guess what Jesus said? It would be easy to say, oh, he said, you dirty rat, you deserve it, go ahead and die. I don't deserve this, but they're doing this to me unfairly. He could do that, but he didn't. Do you know what he did when that man said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus told him, this, listen to this, Jesus told him today, you're gonna to be with me in paradise. Was it because he did a lot of good stuff? Went around and apologized for all the things he had done? Not hardly. It was the mercy of God, the grace of God that done that. And that day, on that, those three crosses, one died in his sin because he never repented, never asked for the Lord to help him. One died for our sins. And the other one died to his sin. Where do you fit? Are you tired of the search? Are you tired of looking and trying to find something that'll make you happy? How many times do we hear that unhappiness? Today, they tell me one of the major problems in America is loneliness people being alone and a lot of it's done because of COVID and the other thing is the social media. You go to a cafe or somewhere you may see a whole family sitting there, five of them maybe sitting at the restaurant waiting for their food or whatever and they're all of them, all five of them playing with that. They're not talking, they're not communicating but it leads to loneliness. So each of us have to decide and you probably can't read that what that says but that's supposed to be things, money, Thrills, self, whatever it takes to make you happy is temporary, leads to death. But if you'll come to the desire to have a real happiness, you come to God who provided the love through his son Jesus to die on the cross for us and said if we would believe on him and you have to have him come into your heart and your life. When Christ comes in, he imparts to us his Holy Spirit that helps us to say no to sin. And all of us have a conscience. Even these people, from what I understand, all over the world, about everybody has a sense of awareness of consciousness. I read a book one time called Eternity in Their Hearts, finding out that even the most primitive tribes have a code of righteousness. And they, so they live with guilt. But when you come to 
Jesus and the great love that put him on that cross for you and I offers us these things and then which one are you? Jesus already done that so you don't have to die for your sin but are you going to continue or are you going to turn to him and ask him to have mercy on you? I think it's an amazing thing that God leaves that up to you. You are the one. If you miss heaven, it's because of your decisions. Wouldn't you like to make the decision to invite Jesus into your heart? Ask him to forgive you your sins, help you to walk away from that life of sin, start living for Jesus. He gave his life to save you. And all he asked us to do is to repent and believe. Can you do that? If you've not, I'd really like to encourage you to surrender your life to Christ. Believe on Him and find the joy and security and peace there is in knowing what your future holds. When this body lays down, the person inside goes to be with the Lord. That's so wonderful. I encourage you to do that. I encourage you. If you need any more information about this, you can call the Boone Open Bible Church in Boone, Iowa. I'm sure they'd be glad to help out. Meanwhile, carry on.